Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto joined Mahara Academy, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also support Madraxis for his fantastic skill, link in description, so let's begin the story. It was, a bright normal day in Kanoha. Team 7 was, finishing up their daily training and being taught how to be accomplished ninja. Well actually, Sasuke was, being trained how to be a ninja, Sakura was, fawning over him, and Naruto was, once again, doing chakra control. Alright team, that's enough for today. Meet back here tomorrow at the same time. Kakashi said to his three students. Naruto nodded enthusiastically. You bet sensei. See you around. He yelled in a typical fashion. Kakashi just waved and off to do whatever it is that he does all day. Sakura turned to Sasuke as he began to walk away. Hey Sasuke-kun, would you like to? No. The raven-haired boy said coldly and continued walking. I'll go with you Sakura-chan. Naruto ran over to her happily, only to be hit in the head. No way. I'd never go out with a baka like you, get lost. She said harshly, then turned to go stalk, err, ask Sasuke for a date again. Naruto just watched his teammates go. As soon as they disappeared, the happy grin immediately slipped off his face. Morons. He muttered. Oh well, might as well get ready for work. He shrugged and then headed for his apartment. He arrived a short while later, not even bothering to lick his door. He sighed as headed into his room and opened up his trunk. Damn I really hate this jumpsuit. He thought sourly as he slid the jacket off. As he did he also reached into the trunk and pulled out a different set. These clothes were actually a set of standard Anbu pants and armor. He changed into the pants and slid on the armored vest, exposing his Anbu tattoo on his left arm. Lastly he pulled out a standard black Anbu cloak and a grinning fox mask. Slipping both on, he headed back out of his apartment discreetly and to the Hokage Tower. X. Siratobi was to have as normal a day as possible, considering the fact that he ran a village full of ninja. He was slightly troubled however, by the most recent mission assignment that had come in. He stood facing his window, taking a puff on his pipe every now and then, as he looked out over his village. Just then he heard a dull knocking at his office door. Who is it? He asked without turning. Sir, it is Fox Taichu, here at your request. His secretary's voice carried into the office. The Sandane nodded. Send him in. He heard his door open and footsteps entered the room. Okajama, Fox reporting as ordered. The Anbu said crisply as he walked into the office. Saratobi turned and nodded to the shinobi. Thank you for coming so quickly, Naruto. He said with a small smile. The masked shinobi chuckled and pulled off the creepy fox mask. Am, old man. You want the entire world to know who I am? He said jovially. They both knew he was, joking as the Hokage always had his room soundproofed as an extra precaution. Ah, I'll keep that in mind. It's good to see you, lad. Sandane gave a warm smile. Truthfully, he had been more than skeptical when Naruto had first joined the ranks of Anbu at age 10. He had argued that life as a shinobi, especially an Anbu, was not healthy for a child so young. But the Anbu commander had been adamant in his request for Naruto to join, and likewise Naruto was equally as determined. There was no denying the boy's skill, and eventually the old cage had caved. Life had gone surprisingly well for the young blonde after he entered Anbu. Everyone had welcomed him warmly, as most watched over the boy at some point or another, and accepted him as one of their own. Somehow, probably due to his naturally cheery personality, the effects of being a cold killer hadn't worn off on Naruto. He had kept much of his personality and happiness. Though I wish Kakashi hadn't corrupted him at such a young age. The Sande mentally grimaced, thinking of Naruto's rather large collection of Icha Icha Paradise. Naruto gave a foxy grin. So do you have a mission for me? I doubt you called me here just for a warm meeting. Saratobi nodded. Correct. We received a rather interesting mission just a few hours ago. Sandame said, his voice now serious. Naruto automatically switched into professional mode. Who was it from? He asked. The Hokage shrugged. He didn't give a name. He was heavily clothed so we couldn't see his face either. The Hokage didn't sound overly concerned. It wasn't uncommon for a mission client to remain anonymous to protect themselves. Naruto nodded. What rank is it? He asked with mild interest. This rank. It's a long-term mission, at least a few months. Sandame explained. Naruto hummed thoughtfully. I would need an excuse for leaving Team 7 so suddenly, and you would probably need someone else to watch over Ichiha. He said carefully. Saratobi nodded. I already have someone picked out. I'm sending you, because this mission is outside the elemental countries. At this Naruto's eyes widened. Outside? I didn't go there, we took missions outside of the elemental countries. We usually don't, but our client paid a very substantial amount of money. I would be a fool to turn down such an offer. The Sandame said with a small bit of weariness. Naruto hesitated for a moment and then nodded. Okay, well what is the mission then? 
The old cage pulled up a scroll with the label S rank on the seal. He handed it over to the young Anbu. Assassination. Your target is currently in residence at a boarding school called Mahara Academy in Japan. Apparently she is the heir to a rather prestigious family line. Her name is Kano Kao and OKASP. Be advised that she does have a bodyguard. It's some sort of samurai though, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. The Hokage explained. Naruto scanned over the scroll quickly. His eyes paused at a certain piece of information. What the hell? It says that she isn't even 15 yet. He said in disbelief. Saratobi nodded grimly. I don't like it either, but like I said, our client is paying us too well for us to turn it down. Naruto scowled slightly but nodded. I don't like it, but I'll do it, of course Hokage-sama. The Hokage nodded in approval. Good. Pack for a long trip and you may leave whenever you feel ready. I want to report every few days. Dismissed. Naruto saluted smartly. Hi Hokage-sama. And with that, he went off to his apartment to pack. This is going to be hell. He thought silently. XX, this is heaven. The young Anbu thought happily. He was, currently on a large train that was, filled with girls. Girls wearing rather short school skirts. Needless to say, Naruto's perverted mind was, in overdrive. Maybe this mission won't be so bad after all. Naruto would admit he was, a pervert. He was, nowhere near as perverted as Kakashi or Jiraiya, but he could admit he was, one. He believed that all men were, to whatever extent, perverted, and he tried to keep it at a minimum whenever possible. Of course he still had his precious itcha itcha. Naruto was, currently decked out in dark jeans and black muscle shirt with a white jacket over it. Many girls had been giving looks and whispering about the strange boy. Naruto took it all in at a simple glance. Half of him was, a trained killer that was, looking at all possible escape routes and threats, and the other half was, trying not to be distracted by the short schoolgirl uniforms. Next stop, Mahara Academy. Naruto was, broken out of his thoughts by the voice over the loudspeaker. Finally. He thought. The train ground to a halt and the doors slid open. Naruto prepared to take a step out of the train, and was, immediately trampled by a horde of girls, all racing to get into the school. After a few minutes of laying on the ground in pain, Naruto pulled himself up, grabbed his pack and began to head across the campus. This place is huge. He thought in slight awe as he looked around the giant Mahar campus. Schools, shops, dorms, it could be an entire village. He paused and stared in open awe as he passed the world tree. Damn, we don't have trees that big even back in fire country. Naruto managed to calm himself and headed off to the dean's office. Okay, I'm a simple orphan, wanting to find some work around the school. No past, no nothing. He mentally went over his story again. According to the, rather detailed, information regarding the school, the headmaster of the school was, his target's grandfather. Naruto winced slightly. That will make things kinda hard. Oh well, good thing our client actually had a map of this place, or I would be screwed. He continued walking until he found a large administration building. Finally. He thought. He suddenly heard footsteps approaching rapidly behind him. Look out. Naruto turned around quickly, only to be sent crashing to the ground. He rubbed his head sorely. Ow. He muttered. Sorry about that, I was in a rush to get to class. Naruto looked up to see what, or rather who had crashed into him. It was a girl around 14 years old. She had dark skin and light blonde hair pulled up into two pigtails. The girl was looking down at Naruto curiously. Are you hurt, Eruka? She asked. Naruto stood up quickly and brushed himself off. Oh, no, I'm fine. Sorry about that. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. He bowed and introduced himself. The girl smiled. Kufei. Nice to meet you, Dot, she said happily. Naruto found himself smiling as well. Damn, she's pretty cute. He thought. Well, I should be going now. Don't want to be too late, see you around, Kufei yelled as she ran off into the building. Naruto smiled and chuckled to himself. Kufei, eh? Interesting. He said simply before entering the building himself. After wandering around for a while, he finally found the office. He walked over to the secretary. Excuse me. He said calmly. The secretary looked up from whatever it was that she was doing. Can I help you, little boy? She asked sweetly. Naruto's eyebrow twitched. Little boy? He was 12 for Kami's sake. And an elite assassin to boot. No way in hell he would be called a little boy. He took a deep breath to settle himself down. Calm down, killing her wouldn't give a very good first impression. He tried to reason with himself. He glanced up at the secretary who was still smiling and put on a smile of his own. Yes, actually. I have an appointment with Dean Kanosama about a job opening. He said evenly. The lady blinked in surprise. A job? My, you are so young too. She said in a disbelieving tone. Naruto held his smile, though it was becoming increasingly hard. Yeah, but I have to make money somehow. Truth be told, it was purely luck that Naruto had found an ad for positions at Mahara Academy. 
It made his job a whole lot easier, and Naruto jumped at the opportunity. Well then I suppose you can go in, Kano-sama doesn't have any other meetings for a while. The lady shrugged. Naruto nodded in thanks and entered the office. There were two people inside. One was, a young looking man with a cigarette, and the other was, an old man with a ridiculously large head. Definitely the Dean. Dean Kano looked up at the sudden intrusion. Ah and you are? He asked in a warm voice that reminded Naruto of the Sandane. The blonde Anbu gave a polite bow. I am Yuzumaki Naruto Dean Sama. I am here for an appointment about a job offer. The Dean nodded. Ah yes Naruto. Welcome to Mahara Academy. As I'm sure you already know, I'm the headmaster of this academy. This is T-A-K-A-M-I-C-H-I-S-P. One of our faculty here at the school. Takamichi nodded in greeting. Now then, you say you would like a job here. You are awfully young, too much so to be a teacher. What can you do? The headmaster inquired. Naruto paused for a moment. Anything you need me to sir. I can work around the grounds or help with janitorial work. I just wish to have a way to work. He said, hoping that they would buy it. Why choose Mahara, though? Takamichi spoke for the first time. Naruto turned to him and rubbed his head sheepishly. Well, truth be told I just happened to find an ad for work here and decided to go for it. He said. Takamichi sweat dropped at his reason. Well, aren't you a little young for a job? What about your parents? The teacher inquired. Naruto adopted a sad expression. I'm an orphan. I'm trying to make some money so I can live on my own since the orphanage kicked me out. He said sadly. Takamichi looked down. Oh, sorry. He said ashamedly. Naruto just smiled. Don't worry about it. He said, cheeriness returning. Dean Kano rubbed his chin thoughtfully. He was, staring at Naruto with intensity, making the boy get slightly nervous, though he didn't show it. Tell me Naruto-kun, can you speak English? He asked finally. Naruto blinked, caught off guard at the question. He had learned English during his training in Anbu. It was, required for all Anbu to know at least some of the language for diplomatic reasons. Well enough to hold a conversation. He said finally, not wanting to give away too much. The dean's eyes lit up. Excellent. As it stands, we have an English class that could use an assistant teacher. You can start there. He said firmly. Naruto blinked and Takamichi looked shocked, but didn't say anything. Well, thank you Dean Sama. I promise to try hard, um just one thing. Naruto ended unsurely. Yes, why a teacher? Like you said earlier, aren't I a little young to teach students? Naruto questioned. The old headmaster chuckled. Yes I did, but I am not too concerned with that. Besides, the current teacher there, Nigi Springfield, is only 10 years old. Naruto's eyes shot into his hairline. 10? Wow, I guess that solves that problem. Naruto said with shock. The dean nodded. Good, it settled then. You are to provide assistance to Nigi Springfield in class 2A good luck to you. The dean finished with a voice of authority. Naruto nodded but then hesitated. Um, sir, what about living arrangements? The old dean just waved him off. Don't worry about that. There are plenty of empty dorms around campus. I'll have my secretary arrange a place for you to stay. He explained. Naruto smiled and bowed. Thank you. I promise to try my best. The headmaster chuckled. I'm sure you will. Now then, Shizuna-san here will show you to your new class. The man behind Naruto. The ninja turned and jumped slightly at the lady that had somehow snuck up behind him. What the hell? I didn't even notice her. I'm going to have to concentrate harder. Naruto mentally scolded himself. Shizuna smiled down at the boy. Hello there Naruto-san. If you would come with me. She gestured out into the hallway. Naruto nodded and gave the dean one last bow before following the woman. The minute he had left, Takamichi turned to the dean. Why did you make him an assistant teacher, especially Tanigi's class? He asked in disbelief. The old man stroked his beard thoughtfully. Surely you felt the power within Naruto-kun. I can't quite identify it, but it feels extremely strong. He said. Takamichi nodded in confirmation. Do you think he is a mage? If so, a friend or foe? He asked seriously. The dean went silent for a moment. If Naruto is an ally, then he could greatly help us. Recent events have forced us to be on guard, especially with the Kyoto incident over the break. Naruto could prove to be a valuable ally indeed. And if he is a foe? Takamichi asked. If he is an enemy, I have no doubt in you or Nigi's abilities to prevent an incident. The dean finished. Takamichi sighed and accepted the explanation. There wasn't much else to do except watch and see how you Yuzumaki would behave. And here is 2A. Shizuna said she led Naruto up to the door of the classroom. Naruto gave her a thankful look. Thank you. Well I suppose this is it. He said. Shizuna suddenly paused. Oh, I'll have a class roll for you by tomorrow, Naruto-san. Good luck. She said cheerfully. Naruto nodded and breathed in. He grabbed the doorknob and slowly opened the door. As he entered, all eyes turned towards him. 
There were a total of 31 girls in the class from the looks of it. There was a young looking kid with red hair tied up in a ponytail standing at the teacher's desk. He looked up and smiled as he saw Shizuna enter behind Naruto. Ah, Shizuna-san. What can I do for you? The boy asked. Shizuna smiled at him warmly. Hello, Nigi-kun. I'd like to introduce you to your new assistant, Yuzumaki Naruto. She stepped aside, letting Naruto walk up to the desk. Nigi smiled and held out his hand. Nice to meet you Naruto-san. I'm Nigi Springfield, welcome to class 2A. He said. Naruto smiled and shook the boy teacher's hand. The pleasure is mine, Nigi-san. I'm looking forward to working with you. He had a grin plastered on his face. Shizuna turned to leave. Well then. If you have everything under control here, I must return to Team Kano. Call me if you need anything Naruto-san. Bye Nigi-kun. With that, the woman left. Nigi turned back to the class that was quietly waiting. Well class, meet Yuzumaki Naruto, your new assistant teacher. He said simply. Naruto stepped towards the class. Hello, girls. I hope to have a great year and look forward to meeting all of you. He said with his famous fox grin. The girls were quiet for a moment. Nigi sweat dropped and took a step back. He knew that silence all too well and wanted no part in the carnage. Sure enough, a second later the girls suddenly rushed Naruto, glumping him and bombarding him with questions. How old are you? Where did you come from? Do you have a partner? The poor boy tried to keep up with all the questions thrown at, but was failing miserably. Nigi chuckled and decided to intervene. Okay girls, you can harass him later, please return to your seats. He said calmly, to which the girls grudgingly obliged. Naruto threw the child mage a thankful grin. Now then Naruto-san, I was just about to take attendance. Please feel free to watch for now until any problems arise. Nigi said. Naruto nodded, grabbed a stool and leaned up against the chalkboard. Alright then. Kazumi Asakura. Here. Miyazaki Madoka. H here. As Nigi took attendance, Naruto looked around at the strange group of girls. One in the back was juggling pencils, another was polishing a rather dangerous looking gun, and one kept on staring at Nigi and blushing. Naruto paused as he saw a familiar face in the crowd. Kufei-san. He thought as he looked at the girls. Kufei had apparently recognized him too, because she was staring at him while Nigi was talking. Seeing Naruto look at her, the girl smiled cheerfully and waved. Naruto smiled and gave a small wave in return. This got a few of the girls looking at the two strangely. You two know each other, Naruto-san. Nigi paused and asked. Naruto rubbed his head sheepishly. Well, sorta. He said simply. One of the girls near the middle called out. Hey Kufei, why didn't you tell us that the cute new teacher was your partner? She said loudly, causing both Naruto and Kufei to turn red. I it's not like that, the blonde haired girl shouted, waving her hands frantically. A few of the girls sniggered. Nigi cleared his throat. If I may continue Sakurazaki Satsuna. Here. Hano Kanoka. Here. The reply came happily. Naruto instantly perked up, searching for a face. Finally he came to rest on Kanoka. My target. Naruto's thoughts instantly became deadly. At least I have a face to go by now instead of just a description. Intel is always worse than it's supposed to be. Nigi finished up roll and launched into the lesson. Naruto sat back on his stool and sighed. This was going to take some getting used to. After what seemed like forever, the class ended. Nigi turned to Naruto as the students began to file out. Well, how was your first day? He asked as he gathered up some papers. Naruto sighed heavily. Boring as hell. But I am just here to assist you. You are the real teacher. He said and folded his hands behind his head lazily. Nigi chuckled. Yes, don't worry though, there will be plenty of work later on in the semester. Now then I must be going. Nigi waved goodbye to the blonde assistant and headed off to wherever. Naruto stood alone in the classroom. He glanced around before walking out slowly. And now my mission officially begins. Naruto strode calmly down the sidewalk on the far side of campus. The classes had ended for the day, and students were hurrying around to various after-school activities or whatever they did. It had been a week since Naruto had first arrived at Mahara Academy. It had been rather uneventful. Wake up, help Nigi out with various assignments, do it all over the next day. Truth be told Naruto was beginning to get very impatient with it all. I haven't even been able to get any more information on Kano. He thought sourly. He waved cheerfully to a couple of passing students with a smile on his face, but inside he was scowling. Every time I even look at Kanoka, that damn samurai gives me a look. Naruto had come to the conclusion that Satsuna had to be Kanoka's swordsman bodyguard. Why? Well maybe it was the giant freaking katana she carried around with her. Naruto briefly wondered if anyone actually ever thought why there was a sword-wielding student, but with all the weird things that Naruto had seen so far, he supposed it didn't really matter. Naruto decided to head to the World Tree, as he had come to learn its name. 
As he walked, his thoughts drifted back to the young swordsman and his problem. He could easily take her out, but that would arouse suspicion. Naruto was, new to the academy, and if a student were to disappear, eyes would likely turn towards him. Sure, he was, a minor, but he wanted to keep as low a profile as possible. Ultimately, even if Naruto was, discovered, he could simply fight his way through, but that would eventually draw attention to the elemental countries in Konoha. Above all else, Naruto wanted to keep Konoha hidden from the danger. Besides, there was, something dot off about the class he was, in. Naruto's carefully honed Anbu senses went crazy whenever he was, around some of the students. And Nigi. Naruto narrowed his eyes. There was, something odd about the young teacher. First and foremost being the fact that a 10-year-old was, a teacher. Then again, he shrugged, he didn't have room to talk. An Anbu since age 10. But still Nigi was, hiding something. Naruto noticed how he interacted with some of the girls, more than simply teacher and student. There was, something going on and Naruto's danger senses went off every time he saw them. Naruto thought for a moment. Madoka-san, Asuna-san, Yu-san, Kid-san, Kufei-san, Kanoka-san, Satsuna-san. Those girls seemed to be involved with Nigi in some way. I suppose it doesn't matter all that much, but it may be a possible threat in the future. The young blonde thought. As he rounded the corner of a building, the world tree came into full view. Damn, I still can't believe how big this thing is. He thought while staring at the tree. His ears perked up as a sound reached his ears. There was the sound of two people breathing hard and flesh hitting flesh. Naruto walked further down the sidewalk until he saw the reason for the noise. Nigi and Kufei. He thought. Indeed the two were underneath a giant tree doing what appeared to be practicing martial arts. Naruto's senses tensed a little bit. Years in Anbu had caused Naruto to be automatically cautious of any form of attack, even when not directed at him. Naruto watched as Nigi unleashed a flurry of punches at Kufei, only for the girl to jump back and block. The girl followed up by lunging to the left and driving her elbow at the red-haired teacher. Nigi brought up his arms and blocked, only to be knocked down when Kufei used her momentum to sweep her leg into Nigi's. She is quite good. Naruto thought, watching the girl move. They both paused for a moment, panting. Then Nigi got back up and they both relaxed. You are getting better Nigi Bozu. Kufei said happily. Nigi nodded, smiling between pants. Yes, but not nearly as good as you are. How did you get so good at this Kufei sensei? Asked. Kufei smiled and opened her mouth to answer, but was, promptly cut off. From years of practice, I would imagine. Naruto said, finally making himself known. Nigi and Kufei spun around. Oh, Naruto-san, I didn't see you there. What are you doing here? Nigi asked in a startled voice. Naruto yawned lazily. Oh, not much. I was, just walking around when I saw you two sparring. I never imagined you as the combatant type Nigi. Why the martial arts? He asked casually. Nigi began to sweat slightly. Um well no reason actually. It is just for a contest that I'm doing with some of the students in a few days. He said nervously. Kufei sighed. Nigi Bozu really sucks at lying dot, she thought. Naruto narrowed his eyes. He could tell when someone was, lying, and Nigi certainly was. Nigi squirmed under his gaze. It really isn't any of my business, but Nigi does seem to associate with Kanoko a lot, so getting involved here might Naruto thought it over in his head. Well you have a lot of practicing to do if it is in a few days. He said finally. Nigi gave a silent sigh of relief, and then raised an eyebrow. Really? I thought I was, coming along rather nicely. He said. Naruto chuckled. Well, you have a lot of the basics down, which is a good thing. I don't recognize that style, but you have a very sloppy stance, and your punches leave you too open. He said with practiced ease. Nigi blinked, and Kufei's eyebrows shot up. You know about martial arts, Naruto-sensei she asked in slight disbelief. Naruto nodded. I do. I am quite proficient in unarmed combat actually. He said. An odd gleam entered the dark-skinned girl's eyes. Of all the people that she had fought at Mahara, none of them could compete with her, and frankly, she wished for a challenge. Nah, how's about a spar then dot, she said, Naruto blinked. He really didn't want to give himself away, but dot. Okay sure. He said with a shrug. Nigi sighed and moved to sit on the railing of the sidewalk. I'm going to take a quick breather then. Good luck Naruto-san but be careful. Kufei-sensei has a mean kick. He warned, rubbing his leg. Naruto smiled back at him before turning back to the waiting Kufei. Well, you ready? He asked, slipping into a tojutsu stance. The girl raised an eyebrow at his stance, but slid into the Pakuajang stance. You bet, she yelled excitedly. Naruto smirked and the disappeared suddenly. Kufei's eyes widened briefly before she sprung into action. She barely managed to twist away before Naruto first zoomed by her head. She quickly brought her arms up and blocked as Naruto appeared in front of her, launching a barrage of punches. He hits pretty hard. Kufei thought as the punches impacted her arms. 
Quickly she twisted her body around and followed up with a lighting fast punch aimed for his face. Her eyes widened slightly when Naruto caught her fist. He caught her wrist and swung her around to knock her off balance. Ku Fei was barely able to recover before Naruto launched into another swarm of punches. Both combatants jumped apart and stood there panting. You're pretty good. Ku Fei complimented. Naruto smiled. Why thank you. You aren't too bad yourself. Want to continue? He asked with a playful smirk. Ku Fei adopted a similar one. Bring it. Nigi sighed as he leaned against the railing. This was going to take a while. Two hours later, Naruto and Ku Fei stood opposite of each other, breathing heavily. Both looked worse for wear, though Ku Fei more so than Naruto. Wow, Naruto sensei. It has been a long time since I had that much fun. Ku Fei said happily. Naruto returned the smile. Yeah, it was fun. I haven't had a decent sparring partner in ages. He turned to where Nigi was, resting, and then sweat dropped when he saw that the boy was asleep. Nigi. Wake the hell up. Naruto screamed at the red-haired teacher. Nigi shot up with a startled yelp. After getting his bearings he began to apologize. Ah, I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. He blubbered sheepishly. Kufei snickered and Naruto just rolled his eyes. Chill out, dude. We did get a little carried away. He said. Kufei nodded in agreement. Yeah, sorry Nigi Bozu. I guess we will have to continue our lesson another time. She smiled apologetically. Nigi gave a weak smile. Don't worry sensei. We still have some time. He said. Once again Naruto was wondering what exactly Nigi was planning. He shrugged. Well, whatever. I'll see you guys back. Hey. Nigi sensei. Naruto was cut off by a loud shout. All three turned to see Asuna, Kanoka, Satsuna, Nadoka, Kid and Yu walking towards them. Naruto smiled cheerily. Ah, hello girls. He said. Asuna frowned slightly as they walked up. Naruto sensei. What are you doing here? She asked. Kanoka elbowed her in the ribs. Don't be rude Asuna. She said sternly. Naruto laughed. Aw, oh, don't worry about it. I was just having a little spar with Kufei here. He said. Kid raised an eyebrow. Really? I hope you didn't get hurt too bad, Degazeru. She asked. Kufei gave a weak smile. Actually, Naruto sensei here beat me. Dot. The girls stared at Naruto wide eyed. Naruto shifted uncomfortably under their gazes. How the hell did you do that? Asuna asked loudly. Kufei is like the best martial artist at this school. Naruto shrugged. I just practiced. A lot. He said modestly. Asuna snorted in disbelief. It was then that Nadoka spoke up. Hey actually, W we were wondering if you guys wanted to J join us for some L lunch. She said timidly. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this. He knew that Nadoka was a shy girl, but damn. It was like talking to Hinata. Nigi smiled. Of course, girls. We would be happy to. He said. Kufei shrugged. Sure. Naruto saw them all looking at him expectantly. He sighed. Yeah, okay sure. He said. Kanoka cheered and grabbed hold of his arm, dragging the blonde off. Come on Naruto sensei. I know the best place to eat. She said, all joy. Asuna and the others trailed after her. They ended up at a small Chinese restaurant near the academy, still technically on the school grounds. Naruto was amazed at how extensive the campus was. It was more like a small city than an academy. Naruto glanced around the eatery as they walked in. The smell of cooked rice and meat hit him like a wave. There were others around, seated at the bar and other tables, enjoying rather delicious looking meals. Nice place. He said offhandedly. Kanoka beamed at him. Told you so. She smiled. Naruto couldn't help but give a small smile at the girl's cheer. It was quickly gone however. She is the target. Never get emotionally involved with the target. He reminded himself. They all picked a table and sat around, choosing what to eat. Then another familiar face walked over to their table. Hey, guys. What can I get you? Chao asked happily. Naruto cocked his head curiously. You work here, Chao-san? He asked. She nodded. Yep. Well actually I own the place. She explained, still smiling. Naruto was mildly surprised, but waved it off. They all placed their orders. As she was about to head back, Chao turned to Kufei. Hey Ku. Think you can help me cook some more meat buns real quick? She asked. Kufei nodded. Sure dot she agreed and got up, following Chao to the kitchen. The girl stopped and turned back to the group, smiling sheepishly. Sorry, I won't be long dot she said, and disappeared behind the door. Naruto turned his attention to the girls and Nigi, who were chatting away. So Kufei works here too? He inquired. Kid nodded. That's right. She, Chao and Satsuki all work here after school, the dot Asuna gave a wry smile. Why do you care about Naruto sensei? Take an interest in Kufei. She asked teasingly, leaning closer. Naruto turned slightly red, but shook his head. No, no. I was just curious. 
he said quickly. Maybe a little too quickly. Time for a subject change. Thankfully Nigi jumped in to save him. So, Naruto-san, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself. He said. Asuna nodded. Yeah, it's not every day we just get two teachers younger than us. She said, the girls nodded. Naruto hesitated for a moment. Eh hey, sure. What would you like to know? He asked. Well, how did you get to be a teacher at Mihara? You asked. Having young teachers is almost unheard of. Naruto shrugged. Actually, I just showed up at Mihara looking for any work. To be honest I had expected janitorial work or something. Old man Kano just asked me if I could speak English and stuck me with you. He explained. Everyone stared at him, slightly shocked. So you just randomly got a teaching job. You ask incredulously. Naruto cocked his head. Well, technically I'm just a teaching assistant. I guess Kano just saw potential in me. After all, I am awesome. He finished with a big grin. Asuna just groaned while Kanoka and Nadoka giggled. You nodded, clearly ignoring the last comment. Okay. I have a question. Where do you come from? Those whisker marks on your face are pretty abnormal. She pointed out. The others nodded. Naruto frowned slightly. Well, I'm not from Japan. All I can say is that it is pretty far south. He said. Everyone looked up as Kufei returned, carrying a tray of food with her. Sorry about that dot, she grinned sheepishly. She grabbed a seat next to Naruto, and they all began to dig in as they conversed. A few questions were raised as to how Naruto got to Japan or where he got money from, to which Naruto answered guardedly. He'd raised a finger. But wait, aren't you a little young to be off on your own around here, Digizeru? She asked. Nadoka nodded. Why yeah sensei. Did your parents let you wander around by yourself? She asked. Silence filled the table as they stared at Naruto. The smile was gone from his face and replaced with a small frown. No, not really. He began, his voice now subdued. I don't actually have any parents. I never knew them. The girls and Nigi all looked down shamefully. Nadoka spoke quietly. Ah, I am sorry sensei. I didn't know. Nigi nodded. He sort of knew how that was, never really seeing his parents. All he ever had was his Nichan. It's okay. I got over it a long time ago. Naruto said, trying to cheer up the now somber atmosphere. Suddenly Kanoka stood up and engulfed Naruto in a hug, sobbing and nearly knocking Kufei out of her chair. What? That's terrible. Never knowing your parents. You must be lonely. I'm sorry Naruto-sensei I'll make it all better. She cried, unaware that she was, choking the poor blonde. Asuna couldn't help but snicker quietly. Naruto just sat limply in the girl's arms, unsure how to react. On the one hand, he never had wanted pity from anyone. On the other nobody besides the Hokage had ever cared that much about him. Her eye it's okay Kanoka-san. I'm fine really. He said, trying to calm the girl. I have always been alone and I'm used to it. I don't want anyone's pity. I've never needed anybody's help. He said with a small frown. Kanoka released him and gave him a warm smile. Nah, sensei. It's okay to rely on others once in a while. She said Naruto could only stare at her in confusion. Asuna nodded. Yeah, teach. You're part of the family now. She said with a smile. Naruto looked around at the others in surprise. They all nodded. Of course. Nigi said. Kufei punched him in the arm lightly. We are there for you dot. Naruto took a moment to remember how to speak. Thanks everyone. I I'm not really sure what to say. He managed. Asuna snorted. Then shut up and eat. Everyone laughed, the good mood seeming to affect even the air around them. Naruto looked at the faces of his students and partner and was filled with a strange warm feeling of acceptance. The group talked and ate for a while, joking with each other and getting to know Naruto better. Naruto glanced back at Kanoka. Thank you Kanoka-san. He said softly. She gave him an odd look for a moment, then smiled brightly. No problem sensei. Naruto stared at the girl's warm smile. She really was a nice girl. A cold feeling of dread rushed through him suddenly, making the boy unable to meet Kanoka's eyes. Never get involved with your target. The words came back to him. No matter what happened, Kano Kanoka was still his target. She would be dead. No matter how Naruto felt about it. The pleasant mood of the evening was ruined and Naruto quickly stood up. Well guys, it has been fun. I have to get ready for my second day. Good night all. He said, trying to get away as quickly as possible. He got to the exit when Kanoka called to him. Naruto-sensei, wait a sec. The boy cringed mentally and turned around. Kanoka ran up to him and gave him another hug. Remember, sensei. You can rely on others to help you out. She said softly. Naruto could barely stand the feeling inside of him as Kanoka left back to the group, giving a final wave goodbye. He rushed back across campus quickly, trying to block out his conscience. He had killed plenty of people in the past, with cold brutal efficiency. But somehow dot. Never get involved with the target damn it. And that concludes today's lesson. 
Naruto said formally. Class 3 A stood and bowed in response and began filing out of the room, chatting happily about various things. Naruto sighed and walked back over to his small desk to gather his things. Nigi had asked him to take over the class for the day while he was away. Doing what, Naruto had no clue. But Anbu had a small idea of what it could be. He noticed that Asuna and her group were very anxious to leave. And today what was it? Naruto frowned. Nigi had said he was having a small contest with some students today. Naruto watched as the last student left the classroom. There was definitely something going on, and Naruto would be damned if he was left in the dark. X. Naruto slipped quietly around the corner of the main building. He had decided to trail Asuna, seeing as she was one of the closest to Nigi. Naruto slipped into a normal gate and walked quickly across the courtyard to the dormitories. He rounded another corner, then ducked back around quickly. Asuna was standing around with Satsuna and Kanoka, talking quickly. Naruto peeked her head back around the corner and, upon seeing his targets, crouched down into the bushes. He was too far away to hear them properly. Lad Kakashi taught me this. Naruto muttered, pumping a small amount of chakra into his ears. Instantly a new myriad of sounds entered his ears. Laughter from a nearby group, the birds in the trees overhead and, most importantly, the conversation of his students. Said that he wanted to rest up before the fight tonight. He heard Asuna say. He has been practicing pretty hard, but Nigi is still a kid after all. Naruto frowned. Fight. Hinoka nodded sympathetically. Poor Nigi can work so hard these days. I wish Evangeline Sen had made up some other sort of test for him. She said. At this, Naruto raised an eyebrow and pumped a little more chakra into his ears to make sure he heard right. Evangeline? He thought. How does she tie in with this lot? By Naruto's examination, Evangeline didn't hang around with Asuna or Nigi. In fact quite the opposite. She seemed to actively try to avoid Nigi and his friends as much as possible, only being seen with Chachimaru. Sure Naruto found that to be a little odd, but then he found the young girl to be generally strange. Suddenly Satsuna perked up and turned to where Naruto was, hiding, a small frown on her face. Kuzo? Naruto swore and slipped back around the corner of the building. Somehow the girl had sensed his chakra. Most low-level shinobi couldn't sense his chakra, so how could this girl, this Samuri sense him? There is more to Satsuna-san than meets the eye. Naruto thought darkly. Then Asuna started talking again. Naruto struggled to hear, deciding that getting closer with Satsuna around would be a bad thing. Well anyway, it's going down tonight in front of the world tree, so be sure to show up and give Nigi some support. The boisterous girl said. Both Kanoka and Satsuna nodded. Sure. Of course. Naruto allowed himself a small grin of triumph. Tonight it was. Naruto sensei. A voice behind Naruto made him start suddenly. He whirled around to find Kufei giving him an odd look. What are you doing, she asked. Naruto chuckled sheepishly, rubbing the back of his head. I was, just ah, he glanced around the corner quickly and saw that the three girls had left. I was, admiring these bushes. He answered lamely. Mentally he smacked himself. Who would be dumb enough to fall for that? Ah okay. Kufei said, smiling. Naruto stared hard at her. Seriously? Okay then. I have to go prepare for tomorrow's lesson. Said Naruto, turning to leave quickly. He stopped suddenly when Kufei spoke again. Hey, Naruto-sensei. She began, looking slightly embarrassed. I was wondering, you want to have another spar? She asked. Naruto hesitated. Ah what the heck. I have time to kill. He thought. Sure. X. Naruto and Kufei walked into the small Chinese diner, both panting and looking quite exhausted. Kufei noted to Satsuki at the counter, and then joined Naruto at the bar. Another fun spar, eh Naruto-sensei? The dark-skinned girl asked with a tired smile. Naruto returned the smile and nodded. Yes, I enjoy the practice. He said, panting some. Satsuki brought out drinks for both of them. On the house. The girl said with a sweet smile before returning to her work. Naruto gave her a thankful nod and began sipping on his drink. He and Kufei sat in silence for a minute, both simply enjoying their drinks. Finally Naruto broke the silence. Ne Kufei-san, I've been wondering. He started. You are quite good at martial arts. I was just wondering how you got so good. Kufei blushed slightly at the praise. Ah, my family is good at fighting. I was trained at a young age. My whole life has been really centered around it. She explained. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Maybe you should extend some of that focus to your grades, he said. Kufei chuckled sheepishly, a light blush appearing on her face. She really does remind me of the old me. Naruto thought as he watched the girl. And she's cute too. Kaiubi, strangely enough, piped in. Naruto mentally sighed. Did the stupid fox always have to face into things? The faint chuckling was his only answer. Hey Kufei. The shout made both Kufei and Naruto turn. Nakey waved from the stand entrance. Asakura trailed in behind her. 
Kufei waved back. What are you guys doing here? Kufei asked as the girl sat down next to them. It was, Asakura who answered. Ah well, Meiki was, looking for you. I just decided to tag along. You two never seemed like the types to hang out together so I was, curious. She said nonchalantly. Looking for me, she asked, confused. Meiki nodded frantically. Yeah. It's getting late, and Nigi has his FA contest tonight. The girl stopped herself and glanced over at Naruto. The boy frowned at the quick change but said nothing. Kufei blinked. It's already time. She glanced outside. Sure enough, the sun was, setting over the buildings, its last rays peeking through. Ah, sorry. Let's go she shouted, standing quickly. Then she stopped and turned to Naruto. Thanks for the spar, sensei. It was, fun dot she said with a smile. Naruto couldn't help but smile back. No problem, Kufei-san. I enjoyed it. Aruna stroked her chin thoughtfully, a mischievous smirk creeping onto her face. Well, well Kufei. Were you on a date or something? She asked. Both Naruto and Kufei turned slightly red. No. They both yelled in unison. It was just a friendly spar. That's it. Naruto said. Besides, I could not possibly date a student. It's against policy. He said with a frown. Kufei nodded quickly, though deep down a part of her felt disappointed. She shrugged the feeling off and grabbed Meiki by the arm, pulling her towards the exit. Okay, we gotta go. See ya sensei she called back. Meiki waved too, though didn't say anything. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the two girls but waved it off. So whatever is happening will start soon. Meh, I will leave soon enough. But first Naruto reached into his pocket and pulled out a small orange book. His personal copy of Itcha Itcha Paradise, Issue 4. Naruto chuckled and began to read, a small blush on his face. Asakura leaned over to see. What's that sensei? She asked curiously. Naruto glanced at her. Ah, nothing you would be interested in, Harren-san. It's not really for young audiences. He said. The red-haired girl snorted and grabbed the book out of Naruto's hands. Oh please. You're even younger than me. Just because you are a teacher doesn't mean you're more mature than I am she said and glanced down at the page. She instantly flew back, blood jetting from her nose. Hey master, I can't see from here. Can you move me to a better spot? The small doll Chacha's arrow asked as the three waited in front of the world tree. Evangeline frowned but ignored her. She tapped her foot impatiently. That rat was, late. Tachimaru, she said suddenly. I want you to go full out tonight. Tachimaru tilted her head slightly, almost in confusion. Master, the likelihood of Nigi-sensei even landing a hit on me is less than 3%. I don't care. I'm not exactly looking for an apprentice, and that boy is lucky I am even giving him a chance. Go all out on him. Evangeline snapped. Chachimaru stared at her for a moment with an unreadable expression, then nodded. Yes master. A little ways away, Naruto was, crouched against a wall, covered by a small invisibility dot, he had left the stand shortly after Kufei and Meiki. Of course, being a shinobi, he had beaten the two of them there. Apprentice. He thought, staring hard at Evangeline. What the hell is this? Evangeline San. A shout caused Naruto and the Evangeline group to turn. Nigi stood proudly at the steps to the tree. I'm here for my apprenticeship test. He said, with a strong confidence in his voice. Naruto sighed and leaned against the wall. Looks like the show was about to start. Evangeline stared at Nigi for a moment, then let out a dark chuckle. So you showed up after all dot, she smirked. Alright let's get started. If you can land one hit on Chachimaru using your kung fu, then you pass. The match continues until you are dead or can't continue fighting anymore. The girl explained. Naruto gaped. Dead? Just what the hell were these kids doing? Nigi didn't seem at all daunted and nodded. Evangeline turned and glared past Nigi. And can you do something about the audience? She barked angrily. For a brief moment Naruto thought she had noticed him, but then realized she was, referring to the students who had shown up with Nigi. Sorry, they kinda followed me. Nigi said sheepishly. Naruto frowned and scanned the faces. There are Meiki San and Kufei. Asuna San, Satsuna, and even Kono the target. Naruto corrected himself, a sick feeling entering him when he looked at the smiling girl. He was, trying his best to distance himself from the girl. He would not fail because of simple personal emotions. That was, a rookie's mistake. No, his. Naruto's frown deepened, and he forced himself to glance at the other students there. Eiko San, Akira San, and Yuna San. He thought as he saw the last three students there. How big is this thing? More and more students seemed to be involved. Naruto's thoughts were interrupted by cheers from the group as Nigi stepped up to Chachimaru. He bowed. Tachimaru is pretty strong from what I've heard. Kufei said as the students watched. Nigi will be at a disadvantage if he drags this out. Dot. From his hiding place, Naruto studied Chachimaru. The girl was rather slim and didn't seem at all to be the fighting type. He glanced back at the students. Most of them were cheering, but Naruto noticed the concerned frown on Asian's face. 
for all the arguing they do. Ah, young love. Kaiubi spoke up from inside the seal. Naruto mentally snorted. I doubt that. Half the time it looks like Asuna wants to pummel Nigi into the ground. Ah, but she never does. She seems to be pretty protective of the brat. I suppose hey. Yes. Why the hell am I even talking to you? Naruto didn't wait for an answer and returned attention to the match, just as Evangeline shouted begin. Immediately Chachimaru launched herself at Nigi, a neutral expression never leaving her face. Nigi whipped his arms up and began shouting. I invoke the contract for 90 seconds. Nigi Springfield. Then Chachimaru was, on him, fist swinging. Nigi spun around her fist and swung at his opponent in the same move. Just as quickly Chachimaru brought up her arm and blocked the hit. Akira Eiko and Yuuna stared at the two in awe. Kufei frowned. Close. She muttered. Nigi and Chachimaru exchanged a few blows, neither with much success. The speed in which they moved made Naruto bite his lip in curiosity. No normal human should be able to move that fast. Not without Chakra. I'm interesting. Evangeline said from the side, her expression containing mild boredom. A self-made technique. He's using his magic to make him faster. In the shadows, Naruto nearly tripped. Did she just say magic? He stared hard at her, and then at Nigi. Magic? Did such a thing exist? Of course. Many types of power exist in this world. Magic, Chakra, Kai all similar yet different. Kai Ubi spoke up, helpful for once. Naruto looked away from the match. Magic this is big. Does anyone in the elemental nations know about magic? He asked Kai Ubi. Doubtful. It was long ago that the branches of power separated. The elemental nations, Mundo Viras and Mundo Magica are all separate for a reason. Mundo Wa? Naruto asked in confusion. Kai Ubi sighed. The world of magic. There is a separate world, much like the elemental nations. The magical world. Most people in this world are unaware of its or the elemental nations' existence. Naruto went silent for a moment. How do you know all this? He said finally. Kai Ubi snorted. I'm an age-old demon. I've traveled this world long enough to know most of its secrets. Naruto didn't respond and turned back to the match. He would need to report to the Hokage on this soon. This could change the mission drastically. Naruto watched as Nigi fainted a kick and then jumped inside Chachimaru's guard. Everyone stared intently. It seemed that he would actually hit the girl. But then Chachimaru did something completely unexpected and cartwheeled over Nigi's shoulder. Naruto blinked a few times to make sure he had seen right. Was everyone at this school different? Least now I can figure out why that client paid so well. Nigi collapsed from the last move, laying still. If up dot, Evangeline said. It's over. Go get cleaned up and help yourself. Suddenly Nigi started to rise chuckling. I'm not dead yet. He said, raising his hands into fists. Those were the rules right. Until I'm dead. Naruto smiled at the boy, a hint of pride touching him. That kid just didn't give up. Evangeline gaped at the red-haired boy. Are you seriously going to continue fighting in that state? Then Nigi-sensei? Chachimaru asked about uncertainty. Nigi didn't answer, but instead launched himself at Chachimaru with a cry. For the next hour the two fought. Never once did they stop a rest. Nigi took the worst of it and had a new collection of bruises and cuts, while Chachimaru didn't even have a scratch. Nigi winced a few times at some of the more painful looking hits. He can't win. Kufei said from the watching group. He is tiring out. All the girls watched in concern and horror as Chachimaru relentlessly beat on the child teacher. That's it. Asuna said finally, taking a step forward. I'm ending this now. No Asuna don't. Naruto watched as Meiki jumped in front of the girls suddenly. He tilted his head curiously as Meiki went into a long speech about Nigi being mature and basically being an adult. How touching. The blonde thought dryly. He turned and perked up. Tachimaru had looked back at Meiki, distracted by her speech. She didn't see Nigi's first speeding right for her. Clang. Tachimaru had a look of shock on her face at the hit. Evangeline had an even bigger one. You have got to be kidding. The girl said, gaping. A look of joy erupted on all the three a girl's faces. He did it. Meiki yelled happily. Nigi smiled and then promptly collapsed. All right Nigi. Damn it Chachimaru. Naruto smirked and stood from his hiding place, the invisibility still cast. The little guy had actually done it. Not bad, Nig. Naruto saw Nigi blink and open his eyes. He was surrounded by Meiki, Asuna and that ermine that Nigi always seemed to carry around. Naruto turned to leave. Seemed the event was over. You won, boy. Naruto turned back suddenly. Evangeline was turning to leave. You can come train at my cottage whenever you feel like it. She said flatly. You should keep practicing that kung fu though. Always helps to have a little physical prowess. And then she left without another word, Chachimaru trailing behind her. The others gathered around to congratulate Nigi. Naruto slipped off while nobody was looking. He began walking back to his own room, just as the dawn light began to seep through the clouds. 
That was, interesting. He thought sullenly. I got my answer, but damn, a whole new bunch just appeared. Naruto stopped and stared back the way he had come, and dismissed them. One thing is certain, Hokage-sama needs to know about this. Hokage-sama, I have successfully infiltrated Mahara Academy and made contact with target Kano Kanoka. However, as well as failing to find an appropriate time to strike, I have come across some startling information. A few of the people of the school, and apparently a wide range of people in the outside world, have the ability to use magic like we use chakra. This knowledge has made things much more cautious, and I request orders to proceed in light of this. Should this mission continue? Pox, Naruto re-read his letter once more before he was satisfied. It had been another day since he had spied on the fight between Nigi and Chachimaru. He had observed all the students carefully that next day unsure of who exactly was in on this. Obviously Asuna, Kanoka and their group. He was pretty sure that you, Nadoka and Kufei were new to the whole idea. And as for the others he had seen, Yuna, Meiki, Akira and Eiko, they seemed to have just been there. He truly needed to gather more intel on the nature of this new power, before even considering his mission. In the back of his mind, Naruto almost hoped that the Sandane would call off the mission. But sadly, Naruto knew that it probably would not be the case. Despite the recent prosperity and the hidden leaf, it was still in a state of economic instability. Even this many years after the Kaiubi attack and the coffers were still trying to rebuild. This, if the price was true, would greatly boost the economy back up to great heights. Naruto mentally scolded himself for being selfish. He was a shinobi of the leaf, and his mission could greatly help his village. He shouldn't even be thinking about what he wanted. This is turning out to be more than a simple assassination. He thought idly. Assassination. Naruto had been on plenty of assassination missions and killed more than his share of people with cold efficiency. But somehow the word brought a cold feeling to him now. This was the bitter reality of it. Naruto didn't want to kill Kanoka, not one bit. The girl who always smiled at him and showed open kindness. But those were his orders. Naruto served Kanoha and the Hokage. More than that, he was Anbu. The elite, completely devoted to the Hokage. If he was ordered to kill then that was the way it was. And yet, Naruto frowned sourly as he folded the letter and stashed it in his desk drawer. His room was small and yet comfy, in the far end of the dormitories. Completely private. Naruto began to get ready for bed when a thought struck him. Why did he serve Konoha? It was an odd question, one Naruto had never considered. For as long as he could remember, he had wanted to be a ninja of Konoha. He saw the way they did cool and jumped from rooftop to rooftop and took an immediate liking. It was his dream to one day be Hokage and make the village respect him. See him as more than a demon boy. Did, let's face it. They will never stop seeing you as me. Kaiubi spoke up in a not unkind tone. Naruto stopped and then slowly sighed. I know Kaiubi. I try not to lose hop a bit it's so hard. Besides, what other reason do I have to serve as a shinobi than to protect the people of my village? Images flashed through his mind. Sandame smiled warmly at him. Bakashi reading Icha Icha Paradise during their training bouts. Old man Ichiraku and A.M. My precious people he thought. I fight for them. I kill for them. I would always try to make the village safe for them. He decided, an air of finality settling inside him. He undressed and crawled into his bed, switching off the lights and entering complete darkness. Despite how I feel about this if it was a choice between Kanoka or my friends, I would choose them. I'm sorry Kanoka-san. Naruto squeezed his eyes shut and waited for sleep to take him. Another day of classes came and went with the usual goings-on and activities. Asuna and Aik would fight, Aik would make not-so-subtle passes at Nigi and so on. Naruto found it funny how the boy could get so flustered by his students. They seemed to enjoy teasing him and placing the poor boy in uncomfortable positions. Though Naruto had a feeling that some of the girls did actually have feelings for the young teacher. Aik and Meiki obviously didn't even bother to hide it. Kadoka liked him too, though she was unbelievably shy. And Naruto had a sneaking suspicion about Asuna. The girl definitely tried hard to keep to the idea that Nigi was just an annoying kid, but Naruto could see the way she cast worried glances at him occasionally. And despite all her protest when Naruto commented, you certainly react when one of the girls displays some affection for Nigi Bozu. Said Naruto when the Nigi group stayed after class, apparently waiting for Nigi. Yes, they even sleep together sometimes. Kanoka commented with a sly grin that for some reason, seemed odd on her. Both Asuna and Nigi turned red and sputtered incoherently, while the others laughed. You certainly know how to pick him Nigi. Naruto said with a smile. Unconsciously he glanced at Kufei for a second. The girl did the same and there was a brief moment when their eyes locked. Naruto felt an odd warm feeling hit him in the gut for a moment, but quickly shook it off and looked away. That was odd. Finally Nigi left with the girls, making some excuse. Naruto waited for a minute before leaving them behind. Now it was time for a little reconnaissance. 
He left the building and walked casually around campus for a few minutes until he spotted his quarry. Nigi and his group were moving off into the woods, near the world tree. Naruto cautiously snuck into the edge of the woods and then immediately vanished into the treetops. Being a shinobi of the hidden leaf, he moved deftly through the branches until he was almost on top of the group traveling below. They ended up in a small clearing with some old ruins. An old building. And Chachimaru and Evangeline were waiting for them. Naruto frowned and hid in a tree at the edge of the clearing. He had a pretty good view and, for once, was close enough to hear without chakra. Asuna, Kanoka, Nadoka and Satsuna all lined up in front of Nigi, while Yu and Kufei stood off to the side. Nadoka was glancing around nervously while Asuna and Satsuna, for once not having a serious look on her face, just stood casually. Kanoka was wearing her usual grin. Okay, let's begin. Evangeline spoke. Satsuna, you need to repress your Kai. Magic and Kai will cancel each other out without practice. The girl instructed. Satsuna nodded. All right, Evangeline san. She said and closed her eyes in concentration for a moment. I'm going to try it now. Nigi said, withdrawing four cards. Naruto stared at the card in confusion. Some sort of magic item. Invoke contract for 180 seconds. Nigi began. The cards began to glow. Ministra Nigi Kano Kanoka, Miyazaki Nadoka, Kagurazaki Asuna, Sakurazaki Satsuna. In turn the strange energy began to surround the four girls. They squirmed with some discomfort, but otherwise remained still. Okay let's move on. Evangeline said. Expand the anti-material shield onto everyone at full power. She commanded. Nigi nodded. Suddenly the magical aura grew and surrounded the girls. Nigi frowned in concentration. Okay, now hold it for three minutes and then fire off 199 magical arrows to the north. I expanded the barrier so you don't have to hold back. Evangeline explained, sucking idly on a juice box. In the trees, Naruto tensed up slightly. A barrier? Could it detect him? If so then Evangeline showed no sign of acknowledging his presence. Slowly Naruto relaxed. He would just have to wait and see. Ugh, Nigi muttered. He raised his staff in the sky. 199 spirits of light. Gather unto me and strike at my enemies. He shouted. Light erupted from the tip of the staff and shot off into the sky in a blaze of light arrows. In the sky they exploded in a brilliant fashion. The attack elicited a small oo from Kufei. So this is magic you said, staring intently at the sky. Naruto was, swearing silently as he gripped the tree branch. Damn it. One of those things almost took my head off. He glanced back down. But that was, an impressive display. Is this the power of magic? Suddenly Nigi collapsed in exhaustion, the strain of holding the magic too much for him. Nigi. Nigi kun. The Suna and the others gathered around him worriedly. Evangeline snorted but did nothing to help her new student. This is pointless if he is going to collapse at just that. She said. He may have inherited incredible magical power, but it is a wasted gift. She said coldly. The ermine, who was sitting on a nearby rock, looked up and spoke. Hey Evangeline San, don't you think you're going too hard on him? And Nikki is only 10 years old after all. Naruto stared at the creature. I I'd talks. He thought. Why am I not surprised? Everything is more than it seems around here. He used up more magic by summoning the four contracts and then the 199 magical arrows than he did during the fight at the school trip. Kamo continued. It's only natural he passed out. Any normal mage would too. Evangeline glared at Dot, shut up you stupid furball. You think I'd just settle for an ordinary mage? How about I cook you up and eat you? She growled. Kamo quailed and backed away. Don't you think that's a bit harsh Evangeline? Asuna spoke up, saving Kamo from an early death. School trip. Naruto filed the information away for later. Evangeline shook her head and glared. He should have prepared for this and more when he asked me to be his master. Don't think I'll just let him get by with half-ass training. She said, turning to Nigi who was beginning to come around. Listen up dot excuses and tears won't work on me. She said with an evil grin. If you make even the slightest complaint I'll drink your blood down to the last drop. Nadoka and Kanoka looked a little shocked, but Nigi didn't even seem phased by the threat. Okay, Evangeline San. I'm counting on you. He said energetically. Naruto stared hard at Evangeline from his spot in the tree. But did she just say she drink his blood? Ah, I thought she looked familiar. Hey Kai Ubi. What kind of vampire? Naruto asked in disbelief. Yes, actually. Dark Evangeline. Probably the most deadly vampire to walk this earth in the past years. I encountered her a few times during my art revels. Don't you know how she ended up a kid though? Naruto frowned but said nothing. Magic and now vampires. It would make sense actually. So this kid is a mage of some sort and he is going to Evangeline for training. He assessed. Probably. That kid must have a death wish or something. Nigi began talking again, drawing Naruto from his mental conversation. By the way, if I wanted to defeat a dragon, how long would I need to train? 
He asked as if it was the most innocent question in the world. Now Naruto's eyes bugged out. Dragons. Evangeline turned around and gave Nigi an odd look. Say that again. She said. Nigi blinked. You have I wanted to defeat a dragon. The dragon ha Evangeline looked at him hard. Then she proceeded to punch him hard upside the head. Are you some kind of moron? She screamed. Who fights a dragon in 21st century Japan? Off to the side, Asuna gave a confused glance over to you. What's this about a dragon? She asked. You answered without taking her eyes off of the verbal pounding that Nigi was receiving. Well you might not believe this, but she began explaining their previous day's visit to the library island and the dragon guarded door. After a few more minutes Evangeline finally called the training to an end. Okay that is enough for today. Class dismissed, she said. Nigi nodded and looked back at the group. Thank you all for coming. He said with a bow. Kufei, Nadoka and you left. Nigi turned and saw Asuna standing with his back to her. Ah, Asuna-san. What's wrong? He asked, confused. Oh nothing. She said, though from her look she was, building up to something. Up in his spot, Naruto could already see an argument coming. I heard the story. You know, how you went to Liberty Island without telling me. She said, looking back at him. Her voice was, deadly calm. Nigi started stuttering out an excuse. Ah, well I didn't know what dangers we would be facing and, yeah I know about that too. Asuna interjected with a huff. I don't know about dragons, but there was something really incredible in there right? She asked. Now Naruto was completely clueless about what was going on. And where? That was dangerous. Why didn't you take me with you, you damn brat? Asuna was shouting now and for some odd reason had a small blush on her face though from anger or something else Naruto didn't know. Seems Asuna really cares a lot about him after all. Naruto thought as he watched the drama unfolding. Asuna-san, you were never involved with us in the first place. I thought that we shouldn't cause you too much trouble all the time. Naruto winced. Strike one. Asuna angrily grabbed Nigi by the front of his shirt, causing him to flounder a bit. Never involved. Why would you say that after all this time you brat? She half screamed in disbelief. W what I mean is, I didn't want to put an uninvolved normal person like Asuna-san in any danger. Nigi said, trying to get loose from the girl's grip. Strike 2 Naruto thought, watching the rage play over Asuna's face. Uninvolved. She shrieked. Why do you think I've been learning kendo from Satsuna-san, even when I barely have any free time? She asked yelled. Naruto glanced quickly at Kanoka and Setsu who were watching the argument in silence. Does Asuna know kendo? Interesting. I didn't ask you to do that. Nigi yelled back at Asuna. Why are you getting angry with me? W-Y. I didn't know you thought of me like that. You stupid shrimp. Asuna yelled, her arms flailing out in anger. Now Nigi decided to join in the insults. You're not all that mature either. You violent monkey. He yelled back. The insults began flying and poor Kama was caught in between. What did you call me? I don't want to hear it from some dumb kid who doesn't even have hair where it counts. Asuna yelled back. Naruto had to repress a chuckle at that one. Asuna-san is the Paipan one who still wears bear panties. Nigi yelled back. Okay, now Naruto couldn't hold back a small laugh. Even he knew what Paipan meant. Strike three and you're out. Asuna stared at Nigi in shock, her blush coming back in full force. Eh? She suddenly had a giant fan, Naruto had no clue where she pulled that from, in her hands. Yu Nigi's eyes widened as Asuna gave a furious swing. Jerk. She cried, punctuated by smacking Nigi clear across the field. Naruto winced. That had to hurt. I'm not talking to you anymore. Asuna yelled as she ran out of the clearing. As she went, Naruto noticed, with some surprise that she actually had tears in her eyes. Doesn't seem like the type to cry a lot. Hey Asuna-san. Nigi called, pulling himself up and sporting a new bruise on his forehead. The boy looked pretty upset. Geez, what are you idiots doing? Evangeline commented, making everyone realize that she and Chachimaru were still there with them. I've got something to talk to you and Kano about. Stop by my place on your way back. She said. Nigi and Kanoka looked at her in puzzlement but agreed. The group began to make their way towards Evangeline's cabin, while Naruto watched them from his tree. I should follow them, but if they are heading to this vampire's home, Naruto debated for a moment before deciding to risk it. He followed them to a small, rather warm-looking cabin in the woods around Mahara. It sure doesn't look like the lair of some dark vampire. Evangeline always had a certain taste of hers. Kaiubi said. Naruto crept close until he was hiding underneath one of the windows. He applied some chakra into his feet and, using an old training method, scaled the wall until he hung right below the upper window. He cautiously peeked through the window. It was a cozy-looking cabin, not at all what Naruto would have expected. Nigi, Kanoka and Satsuna were sitting around a table while Evangeline stood off to the side, giving some kind of lecture. However, all that means is that you are giant tanks of magical energy. 
Evangeline said, looking the part of a school teacher. What you need to actually be able to use it is to increase your willpower so you can better control your magic. She explained. And to improve the effectiveness of your magic. You need training for both. Also, just as you need willpower to control magic, it takes physical power to control Kai it was, around then that she noticed that neither Nigi or Kanoka were paying attention, and Guy too upset about his fight with Asuna and Kanoka comforting him. Listen to me damn it. She yelled, practically blowing Nigi back. You're gonna get killed if you don't stop moping around. Outside, Naruto winced at the shouting. And he thought Evangeline was, scary before. Anyway, Kanoka, I got a message from Aishin. Evangeline said, calming down and leaving a very scared Nigi. Kanoka perked up at the name. Hey, hey, from father. Naruto focused hard now. They were talking about Kanoka, and he needed some better intel. It was bad enough when he had little information about her as a normal girl. Now that you know the truth, if it is your wish you would like me to teach you all about magic. The vampire said. Kanoka blinked in surprise. Certainly with your power, you could aim to be a master magi. Hey, hey, the thing that Nigi is trying to be? Kanoka asked, glancing at Nigi. Naruto shifted under the window. Ah, oh, just great. So apparently Kono Kano-sen is powerful. Just great. He thought. I doubt she has any skill at all, considering the meeting they are having. It shouldn't be too hard. Maybe, yeah Evangeline continued, snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. With your power you could really be useful to the world. You should give it some thought. Hinoka looked down, deep in thought. And now for you. Dot, Evangeline turned back to Nigi. To determine which direction that your training should go, I'm going to let you choose your own combat style. Nigi gave her a puzzled look. Combat style? He asked. Naruto leaned forward a bit. This was getting interesting. Evangeline switched back into teacher mode. Yes. From what I can tell, there are two paths that would suit you well. I'll simplify it. First is the wizard style. Leaving your defense almost entirely up to your disciples, you would cast powerful spells from the back line. It's a stable style. She explained. Nigi rubbed his chin and thought. Next is the magic swordsman. To supplement your magic, you would train your body so you could fight alongside your disciples on the front line. You would also use spells that emphasize speed. It's a pretty free-form style. Nigi frowned, obviously thinking of each style. Wizard or magic swordsman he repeated, trying to get a feel for each. There are advantages and disadvantages for each. Evangeline went on. Personally I think wizard style would suit you best since you're such a clever person. She seemed to use the word clever as if it were painful. Nigi thought for a moment. May I ask a question? He said finally. Evangeline sighed and nodded. What is it? She said, though the look on her face said that she already knew what he was about to ask. What style did the Thousand Master use? Evangeline smirked. I thought you would ask that. I would have to say that Nagi's style of magic was strong to the extent that he didn't need any disciples. I'll give you time to think about it. Said Evangeline as she began walking towards the stairs. Come on Kanoka, I've got more information for your own stairs. Kanoka nodded and the two girls left. Nigi spent the next few minutes cycling through the martial arts moves that Kufei had taught him. All the while a thoughtful expression on his face. Satsuna sat off to the side, watching quietly. Outside, Naruto watched the boy train. He certainly is persistent. Reminds me of another certainty that I know. Kaiubi commented. Naruto nodded and watched Nigi. His determination certainly did remind Naruto of himself. That drive to achieve his goals. Hey Kaiubi, Naruto thought suddenly. Yeah. That guy that he mentioned. This thousand master, who was, he? Naruto asked curiously. He was, vaguely aware that Nigi had stopped practicing and was, going on about his argument with Asuna again. Well now, I never met the man, but the stories traveled around. Nagi Springfield, the thousand master was, a mage of exceptional power. He was, said to have known over a thousand spells, hence the title. He went around acting the hero and many people feared and looked up to him. He was, a lot like the Yandame, now that I think about it. Naruto paused when Kaiubi mentioned his dad's name. Springfield. Then that means, yes, it appears that the young teacher is his son or something. It would certainly explain his constant interest in the hero and strive to be like the man. A son trying to outdo his father. Naruto frowned. The son of a hero, trying to protect those close to him and be like his father. Naruto felt a sudden connection with Nigi. Both of them had similar goals. This thousand master what happened to him? Nobody knows. He just disappeared one day. Many think he is dead. Kaiubi answered simply. Naruto looked out into the forests and thought. Nigi obviously held on to the hope that his father was alive. It gave him a goal to reach for. To know that his father lived. That is where we differ, Nigi Springfield. Naruto thought sadly. You still have a chance. I know for a fact that my father is dead. Kit. Kaiubi said softly. The demon never referred to Naruto as Kit before. It is alright Kaiubi. 
I have forgiven you for the attack. I suffered a lot, but in the end it didn't matter. Naruto thought. Though you never did tell me exactly why you attacked Konoha that day. Maybe one day I will, but not yet. A moment of silence passed between the two. Kaiubi and Naruto had never necessarily liked each other, but there was a respect between them. They were bonded, and that was a deep connection indeed. Finally Kaiubi spoke up. Okay dot sappy moment over with. Shouldn't you be paying attention to your target? Naruto blinked. Yes he should. Naruto prepared to move back down the wall when he saw Nigi walk out of the house. He had one of those strange cards pressed to his head, as if communicating with it somehow. Suddenly a magical circle appeared in front of Nigi, and a puff of smoke appeared. Naruto raised an eyebrow in confusion. It looked a lot like summoning, and then the smoke cleared and Naruto got a good eye full of what, or rather who, Nigi had summoned. It was, Asuna, and apparently she had been in the shower at the moment because she was quite wet. Naruto was able to hold out for a moment before his perverted side gave in, and he flew back with a nosebleed. Now normally that wouldn't have been much of a problem except he was standing on the side of the cabin. It was a painful few seconds. The last thing Naruto heard before he passed out was Kaiubi saying, and that's why it doesn't pay to be a pervert in a shinobi. Naruto groaned and opened his eyes, a monster headache already on him. What had happened? Then he remembered. The nosebleed and the painful fall. That would explain the headache. Suddenly he realized that he was inside. He sat up, ignoring the pain of protest in his head, and glanced around. He was in a bed in a small cozy log cabin and cabin. Oh damn. Hey, he's up. Naruto whipped around and saw Kanoka standing in the doorway. He immediately began to mentally swear as Nigi, Asuna, Satsuna, Chakamaru and Evangeline walked in. They all had questioning looks on their faces. Naruto-sensei Chachamaru started. What were you doing sneaking around my house? Evangeline finished, her voice deadly calm. Neruo gulped and calmed himself down. Shinobi training came back to him. Ah well uh, you were spying on us. Nigi said with a frown. Naruto sighed. Guess there was no way around it. Okay, yeah I was, he admitted. Satsuna frowned. For how long? She asked. Naruto noticed that she had a hand gripped on the katana that she always carried around. Oh great, Naruto could leave it given the circumstances they probably would figure it out if he was. Since you got to the cabin no. I followed you from class. I saw you in that clearing. Naruto said, closing his eyes. Nigi's eyes widened in panic while Satsuna frowned and began to draw the blade. Kanoka had a worried expression on her face. Then Naruto-sensei does that mean that you, hi. I saw Nigi using magic. Naruto said. He sighed and leaned back down into the bed, his head still pounding. On hearing this, Nigi broke his silence and began to flip out. Wah. Oh no. Someone else knows. You can't tell anyone Naruto-san. Please. Nobody can find out. He waved his arms in panic. Naruto waved a hand at him dismissively. Relax, Nigi-kun. I won't tell anyone your secret. He said. Nigi looked up at him in surprise. Eh, really? He asked in disbelief. That look was echoed on the faces of everyone present. Oh sure. It's not exactly my secret to share now is it? I was just curious because of the way all of you acted recently. He said. Evangeline silently sighed. These idiots don't know how to keep a secret, Nesensei? Satsuna asked. Naruto looked over at her. How exactly did you hurt yourself? She asked. Nigi nodded. Yes. When I was outside, I summoned Asuna and then suddenly you fell out of nowhere with a nosebleed. He said, a completely innocent look on his face. Naruto thought back to the moment, and a little trail of blood escaped his nose when he remembered seeing Asuna. Aha, uh -huh. well I kinda saw you summon Asuna and he left the sentence open. Asuna, up to this point, had stayed quiet, an angry look on her face. If she had been pissed at Nigi before that little incident, she was downright hateful now. Upon hearing Naruto's answer, she immediately stormed out of the room angrily, slamming the door behind her. Nigi turned and began to run after her. Asuna-san. Wait. He called. At the edge of the door, he stopped and turned back to the group. Promise you won't tell anyone Naruto-san? He asked. Naruto just nodded. Nigi smiled and then chased after Asuna with Kamo running close behind. Anoka turned and looked back at the blonde-haired boy. Well sensei, I guess now you're a part of our little club. She said with a smile. Evangeline rolled her eyes. Oh, terrific. Another idiot for the collection. Anoka and Satsuna left next, saying that they had tests to study for. That left Naruto alone with Chachimaru and Evangeline. The boy shifted uncomfortably for a moment. Well, I guess I should leave as well. Sorry to bother you Evangeline-san. He said, standing up and heading for the door as fast as possible without being too obvious. Wait. A sharp command from the girl made Naruto freeze. He mentally cringed. Naruto turned back around to see Evangeline staring at him with piercing eyes. I sense someone watching us during the fight with Chachimaru. 
She said, that was, you wasn't it. Chachimaru looked surprisingly at her master. Evangeline stared accusingly at Naruto. The boy sighed. I suppose that I won't be able to get out of this vampire's home without at least some truth. He thought. Instantly he switched into cold Anbu mode. Yes. That was, me. He said evenly. Chachimaru blinked in surprise, while Evangeline narrowed her eyes. Dust who are you really? She asked harshly. You can lie to those brats all you want, but I can sense power inside of you. Naruto gave her a cold smirk. And what will you do, Evangeline-san? He asked in his best evil voice. Even the vampire seemed a little taken aback at it. Would you try to kill me? Evangeline snorted. No. It would cause an annoying problem if you were to disappear suddenly. And besides, maybe you will provide a decent boost for them. But I highly doubt you are worth my time. She said smugly, turning her back to him in a dismissive gesture. Naruto gave a faint smirk. He knew what would make this girl sweat a little. He. I wouldn't be so dismissive of Evangeline-san. Most things are never what they seem. Naruto drew up a small bit of Kyubi's chakra and let it out in a small burst that shook the room. Evangeline's eyes widened as she felt the chakra. It was painfully familiar. She whirled around to face Naruto, but the boy was already gone.